everything is just within. So these words from Aronin reminded me of Bushido and how far I came off the path. And I made a choice that day to be something more. Sometimes I find when I'm creating these documentaries and these interviews that it's the moments when the camera is turned off that the magic happened. This conversation with Tulam, founder and CEO of Ronin Tactics, was exactly that. Luckily, I was rolling and he was mic'd up. We were driving to a location to do an interview and Tulam came out with some of the most inspirational stories wisdom, talks on his experiences at war, trauma, and also how he decided to change the outlook on his mental health. This for me was one of my favorite conversations I had with Tulam. It is unreleased and I'm really excited to release it with you guys today. Today's video was made possible by Mulvers.com where you can now get the Not A Journal, a journal that I had designed many years ago. I've used for like six or seven years now. It's led to my success um, in YouTube and business and it's really helped a lot. I think journaling has just got so overcomplicated right now, so this is a no bullshit approach to journaling. That's why it's ironically called the Not A Journal. We had so much great feedback of these. They are selling out fast. We will restock after Christmas, but if you wanna get one ready for 2023, use a link in the description where all the profits go back into making this content possible. Also, the new hoodies, the Inspire Change hoodies have also dropped as well. But before that, one of my favorite conversations I had, it was caught on a fly. So here's a documentary style interview in the car with Tulam, founder of Ronin Tactics with some of the wisest words I've ever heard. Let's jump into the video. You know, during SEER training, survival, uh, evasion, resistance, escape training, you know, you're a prisoner of war. And there's certain levels of this training, high risk level. Uh, in special forces, you have to go through the high risk level of SEER, which you are a prisoner of war. Uh, during this phase of training, you know, they teach you how to escape, you know. So this came with, uh, you know, experience from prisoners of war in the special forces uh, regiment. One of the things is, you know, we have a tunnel system where we, they would, uh, there's a pipe uh, in the middle of, uh, in the woods of North Carolina and then you climb a ladder down this pipe and then you have a series of tunnels. And you began the tunnel with you crawling on your hands and knees, you know, this tunnel under the ground. This dark, cold tunnel. And then you, you go to your elbows and you start crawling your elbows. And then you start belonging your body and you start crawling like a prone position, you know, low crawling position. The pipe narrows, you elongate your body. And you start pulling with your arms, kicking with your legs, your toes, pushing, clawing with your nails. The pipe underneath this ground, you know, it, Can you imagine the psychological effects of that? At one point in my life, I was addicted to painkillers. Carrying one painkiller in my coin pocket. Waiting for the next feeling that I'm gonna have to numb it. Wanted to hide. So after my, my time in service, I retired after 23 years of service, honorably retired. Let me tell you what, what, what I felt after I retired, 23 years. Saw the worst in humanity. Saw the worst in myself, right? I was in this drug addict. I was, I was, I was far off the path of the way Bushido lost myself because hate took me off that path of a warrior. Here I am, a 23-year commando, laying in a dark room, tired. You know, I, I thought that, you know, it's just, I was physically tired and I was injured, you know. Thought I was it, but it wasn't. Yeah, I had no purpose, you know. And I was a drug addict. You know, it took, you know, really 23 years to train who I was. It took five days to get on Army. Five days. 
you know, no, no process to um, mentally disconnect. You know, there was no, no process. Now I, I, I think that they're, they're doing a lot better. I'm just telling you my, my process. And you know, when, when, when I had to uh, retire and I had to in process the VA hospital, I, I'll tell you what my VA doctor said to me. We're really busy, so hopefully I don't ever have to see you. And looking at your, your career, guys like you, you roughly have five years. So I was sitting here in this dark room, right? And my wife was working up in Denver and I was, for hours I would watch a TV that's off, hearing the voices of the world. And I heard this one voice, just so strong. This voice was so strong over any other voice. It said, get up. So I did. I walked around this dark house. Somehow this energy led me to my war room. Well, you know, I have in this war room collection of books, collection of everything I accomplished in the military. Things are all around the world, you know? Literature of warrior, Bushido. And blindly, I, I, I opened up the book and I pulled out a book. It's the book of Five Rings. But Miyamoto Masashi, he was a ronin. He was born in the late 1500s and died in 1645 after writing the Book of Five Rings in a Buddhist cave. Opened up this book line and it said, you know, everything is this within. Look nowhere else. You know, at that point I was looking for the answers everywhere else. I was looking for the answers in these painkillers. Trying to draw the strength from my wife. Calling ex-teammates. Trying to draw what is external to affect how I feel internally. Internally, I was defeated. So, these words from Moronin reminded me of Bushido and how far I came off the path. And I made a choice that day to be something more. I don't know what it is, but to be something more. So there it was. I took all the painkillers and I dumped it down the toilet. You know, and now I, I, I feel like it's better because the veterans are actually helping the veterans. We're not relying on, you know, physicians or doctors that never been down range. Now, you know, like my peers, um, Tom Spooner, he, he runs this, uh, this beautiful healing ground for veterans, you know, and he helps them out so much. Um, gosh, man, I, I, I tell you, um, he runs this place called Warrior's Heart and he, he was, he's a true warrior. You know, he was in the unit, uh, Special Forces Green Beret. Now he's giving back, helping veterans. And what him and I talked about when I visit him was that same thing, you know, we, we get crammed down, you know, drugs and, and yeah, you're just making more of a drug addict. So you're making me rely on the externals, you know, and then uh, Tom brought me out of this healing ground and he, he talked about community and he talked about, you know, forgiving, fulfillment, you know, the same things that I, I believe in, but he was doing it in his own way. So beautiful. I'm so proud of him. Thank you so much to Two for this video. I'm gonna link all Two Lamb stuff down below. Um, he is such an amazing character. We hope to work with him again in the future. And we have plenty and plenty of content coming with Two Lamb still. There is so much unreleased projects and footage that we're really hopeful of, of dropping. We have got a big, big project planned that we've still just not edited yet. Uh, because of so much stuff that's been going off. But Two Lamb's a huge inspiration to me. And this moment for me is one of those conversations that was a very intimate conversation, uh, which Two was more than happy for us to film at the time, but it happened by chance. We were driving to a location and Two Lam um, started speaking some amazing stuff and I said, do you mind if I roll the camera? We started rolling and this is what we captured. And it's a reminder for me, it doesn't matter where you are or who you are with, Somebody has always, always got something to teach you. You've always got something to learn. And that's why sometimes you have to close this and you have to open these and you have to listen to what people are saying and truly listen, not just 
in a robotic phase of words coming at you, absorbing those words. What do they mean? What were those stories they were telling? How did they feel in that situation? How can we learn from that? It's so important to understand that. And I think we all think that we have to learn from somebody above us or somebody who's more successful than us or a teacher or you know an entrepreneur, a businessman or an athlete. Some of the best lessons I have personally learned in life came from people who would be considered failures. I, in, when I was in Mexico, we spoke, I spoke to Jose, who was um, really down and out at the time, and I spoke to him. I spoke to homeless people on the streets, and it's not about what they tell you, it's about how you interpret it and what, how much you are listening. If a homeless man is telling you of all his mistakes he's made, it's like there is, there's huge lessons in, in that. Um, and I, I just think we're not, we're not open to listening to the, some certain people. We think that we have to listen to all the successful people in the world where actually some of the biggest nuggets of wisdom come from people who have struggled, people who are in struggle currently, um, and people who maybe not at the top of their game right now. So keep an eye out, keep, a, keep an ear out, should I say. And not to say that Tulam isn't one of the most successful people I know, but the conversation came out of nowhere and it's a reminder to always keep your ears out for that. As always, today's video was made possible by MulliganBrothers.com, where you can get the ironically named Not A Journal, which is a no bullshit approach to journaling. A journal that I designed six years ago and it helped me out so much and I thought I'd drop it and release it with everyone else. We didn't expect it to have so much success and so much uh, help so many people, but it has and I cannot thank you guys enough for the feedback. They probably will be sold out for Christmas, so we'll have a restock in uh, just after Christmas, after the new year. Hopefully they'll come for us soon. But if you want to get ready for 2023, check the link in the description where you can now get the new hoodies as well. And all the profits go back into creating this content. We would not have been able to fly out to Colorado to film this with our film crew. Uh, we have plenty more projects planned as well. So thank you to everybody for supporting us. As always, guys, uh, have a blessed and productive day. Go inspire some change. Follow me on Instagram. And also, if you wanted to support us in another way, consider becoming a YouTube member. But I'm going to leave you on that one. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.